So, dear, welcome back. It's been uh, 10 months, I think. You yeah, surgery in between. What's, what's the feel now to, to finally be back on a fight week? Man, it, it feels great. I feel like I'm, you know, right at home. I'm super excited, and I cannot wait. This is definitely the best I've ever felt. That's awesome. I know fighters uh, have a tendency to kind of rush back sometimes from surgeries and injuries, and you strike me as a person that would be like that a little bit. So what was the process for knowing, hey, we are really good here, and it is wise for me to be fighting again? You know, I've had to deal with so many different injuries, like, in my last 10 years that I've definitely had to become more patient and learning. And also, having the apex helps out a ton. They're pretty much overseeing my, you know, my recovery you know, the whole way. So that's obviously a ton of help. That's awesome. Is, and obviously, you have spent a lot of time out here in Vegas. Do you think this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a permanent home for you? Or is it just because of, you know, using the PI and the recovery and all that? No, for now, yes, this is de definitely home. I'm definitely officially a resident of Las Vegas. Um, to tell you the truth, at first I didn't see myself living here, but uh, after a year spending some time, um, I really like it a lot. There's a lot of stuff outside of the Strip, so, you know, a ton of food, Mount Charleston, um, and, you know, you can't beat it. It's the cap fight capital of the world, so you're always having people in town, you know, whether you're friends or family or teammates. So as far as getting back to your fighting, uh, not exactly taking warm-up fights, right? I mean, you're, you're calling out the top dogs, even in recovery. I mean, was there any thought of, like, maybe we should go a little lower down the ranks, see how the shoulder's feeling? You know, I feel like a lot of people take that approach and invite me smart and stuff like that. But the way I like to run the show is I, I like to go for the throat right away. So I like, I like fighting the toughest fighters. You know, I called out Jessica and Josh for that reason. You know, I had come off of a loss in my last fight, had a shoulder surgery, and then here I am. I see her. I'm not even, like, fully clear, and I'm like, do you want to fight in September? So <laughs> um, it's just what I do. I, I love tough fights because it motivates me. It pushes me to strive to be, you know, prepared. When I'm in camp, you know, I, I get mean, and I, I, it definitely motivates me when I have such a dangerous opponent like that. Yeah. I, I apologize if you told it before. What was the story of the face-off photo that you had that you used to kind of call this out? Wh wh when did that happen? Where did that happen? So uh, I was helping uh, one of my teammates, Maria. She had a fight for Invicta FC, and I think Jessica Josh was also cornering one of her teammates. And so I seen her over there in Kansas City, and I was like, man, I definitely feel like that's a fight I want. She's in the top five. I was like, I need to call her out now. And then, because she was also staying here in Las Vegas, and I needed to make sure we didn't train in the same area. So I was like, I'm gonna ask her to take a picture, and then a face-off picture. And so we did, and then her coach was there, and I was like, all right, let's send it to Mick. So then that's how it went, you know? Sometimes you gotta go for it. You can't just like sit around and wait for the perfect opportunity. Definitely didn't wanna do it all for social media. I think face-to-face -face is the best way to do it. That's awesome. I thought it was like an old photo or something. That's great that you yeah. used it that way. So talk about the matchup. Obviously, you know, she's accomplished a lot of things. Everybody talks a lot about her power and her strength. I mean, what do you see in her as an opponent? Yeah, I mean, obviously she's very dangerous. She's got a lot of, like, highlight reels of knockouts and stuff. And um, so her also being the former champion, and she's fought in three different weight classes. Um, you know, I just want to fight the best. I, I, I think she's such an amazing fighter. It's somebody I definitely looked up to when I was getting into, you know, fighting. Um, so it's definitely a dream come true to fight all these women that I looked up to. And they scare, they, they scare the shit out of me. But you know what? That makes me work really hard, and I'm really excited. But, um, you know, I'm a little crazy, too, so I kind of scare myself, too. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Last thing for you, uh, the goal here. I mean, obviously you want to pick up a win, but um, I mean, does it feel like you need to go out there and make some kind of statement, like get that hype that you had behind you, you know, not, not that long ago before the layoff? I mean, does it, does it feel like a need for that or is it just, let's just go get a win and, and get back to work? You know, I'm, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight the best fight. I'm going to go out there for, for the finish. This is what I want. Um, I have something to, to not necessarily prove to everybody else, but to my to myself, you know, I, I truly believe I'm one of the best in fighters. I really believe I'm going to be a world champion. Um, I just, sorry, I kind of got lost because I was like running on. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I really feel like I belong, I belong out there. I don't want to go on there and be like, put so much pressure on me about it. I'm just going to go out there and get the win whatever way I can. And I really believe I'm going to do, I'm going to, it's going to be a great night of fight. Let's just say that. We're going to get the finish whether standing or on the ground. 
Cynthia, uh, right here. Uh, I know you've been a flyweight for a bit now, and it's been a while since your last fight, but I remember something Dustin Poirier said when he went from featherweight to lightweight, that it was easier to make the weight, but it took him a while to feel like a lightweight rather than just a featherweight that wasn't cutting weight. Did you go through the same thing at all? Did you just feel like a straw weight that wasn't cutting weight, or did you just feel like a flyweight right away, your body adjusted? Um, I felt at first it was a little bit in, in between for sure, um, where I felt like I was too big for straw weight and too small for a flyweight. But now having to have my shoulder injury and sitting out and working with the apex, I definitely feel like a true flyweight. Um, I guess, you know what, I honestly feel like I was always a true flyweight. The, the issue was is that I think we were all just cutting a lot of weight. I think everybody's getting a lot better about like not having these drastic weight cuts. Um, but I felt like I, I should probably always should have been a flyweight. At the time when I first started, there was, there was no flyweight division. Honestly, I don't even know how I made 115. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cynthia, over here. Uh, have you brought in any, anyone specific to kind of replicate Jessica for this camp? Um, no, I didn't bring anybody specific into this fight camp. Luckily for me, there, there is a lot of training partners here in Las Vegas. Um, I did have one specific partner who happens to be shorter than in, me, and he's almost, he's like the same height as Jessica and Josh. Uh, his name's uh, Aleko Poignier. He's a professional out of Extreme Couture and Ten Planet. Um, and yeah, he pretty much helped me out for the most of my rounds. I was able to use it because obviously she's short and kind of big, and that's exactly how he was. So I did find a good training partner. Very cool. And you know, she's a former champion, of course. So does that kind of make this fight feel like a title fight before a title fight for you? Obviously, a big name and big spot. I mean, absolutely. I mean, she, not only she, is she the ex champ, uh, an ex champ for, at the Shawway, but she's also the number one contender in this division. So I mean. Obviously, that would prove that I'm a true title contender if I'm up there beating a former champ who is also the number one contender. Yeah. And uh, what would you say has been your biggest learning experience in your career so far? I would say my biggest learning experience is um, definitely patience and you know just m humbleness, a lot of humbleness. Because when I first got into the UFC, I blew out. I like had four fights in the first year. You know, Dana was raving about me. I was the next big thing. And then boom, I didn't fight for a whole year. Then I missed weight and then I lost. So imagine just being up top and like everybody loving you. Next thing you know, everybody's like Photoshopping your body on like, you know, DC's body after I miss weight, just, you know, stuff like that. So it was a little bit, it, it, that was a very humbling experience. and. You know, it really reminds me of what's really important, and that's the people around me, my friends, my family, my coaches. And so definitely that's what fighting's taught me. It's like a good one. And the last thing for me, you know, you were a former strawweight, and, you know, you fought Carla Esparza. And, you know, there's kind of the weird thing going on at strawweight. At least you got passed up. Uh, just curious your thoughts on all that, and, you know, how do you see the rematch with Rose and Whaley going? And do you think Carla should have got the shot? Um... I kind of, I kind of do feel like Carla should have got the 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 next shot, but um, either one of them, you know. But I, I do feel like Carla has been working extremely hard to get back there in the title shot, and I think eventually that fight will happen. And I think it's the fight that they can definitely sell, just because we know that Carla Esparza became champion by choking out Rose Namajunas. So it's something they're definitely gonna put on together in the future. Um, I felt like she should have the shot, but. You know, that, that Wei Lee versus Rose is obviously a great fight as well. For sure. Best of luck. Thank you. Yeah. See. Sorry. Uh, for the Hispanic audience, can you explain the Spanish you were in terms of this fight? Well, now I feel very happy, very happy to represent all the Mexicans, all the community Latina. Um, a tener tantos meses sin poder pelear y ahora regresar y ahora voy a pelear con la peleadora que es número uno de Jessica and Josh y ojalá siguiente sigue el título para ser la primera campeona mexicana del UFC. Uh, esta, estos días van a ser muy ocupados para los peleadores mexicanos, peleas tú, pelea eh, Ortega, el Canelo próximamente. ¿Para ti qué significa estar involucrado en una etapa tan 
tan ocupada para los peleadores mexicanos? Bueno, a mí me da un gran orgullo de estar, eh, orgullo de estar peleando en los mismos tiempos que está Canelo, uh, también con Brian Ortega. Obviamente los mexicanos siempre hemos tenido gran corazón, gran peleadores, y a mí significa algo grande. Um, y también siento que es el mes de, de herencia de, de, de Hispana. Y pues sí, ese, ese es el tiempo, es el tiempo de los mexicanos y ya que tenemos el campeón de Brandon Moreno y vamos a seguir agarrando más campeones. Gracias. Gracias. Cynthia, right over here, on your left. Um, obviously, the champion of your division is competing later in the night. How do you see that one going down between Shevchenko and Murphy? Um, well, if we look at the way fights take place for like Lauren Murphy, she usually wins her fights by splits, barely wins her fights. When Valentina fights her opponents, she dominantly beats them, either finishes them or decisively. Um, and for that reason, you know, to be the champion, you can't barely beat the champion. And Lauren kind of, that's how she, she kind of barely scripts by winning those fights. So I just don't see her pulling it off. I think she's going to come out short. Now, not to jinx anything, but should anything happen, do you plan to show up for weigh-ins on championship weight in particular in case they say, Cynthia, you know, you're ready to step up? Absolutely. I mean, that was almost something I was willing to do last fight because I also fought in the same card as Valentina uh, last November. And so that was the thing. If either Jessica or Jennifer or Maya at that time, if she didn't miss weight or didn't show up, I was willing to more than likely step up. And I'm more than likely to step up this time again. Thank you.